Hello my beautiful people on the internet. Today we are going to start a new course video which is going to be about we making a platform just like YouTube. We will not be copying YouTube's front end stuff like that because we will not be making YouTube itself but we'll make another platform that will do the things that YouTube does. Basically it will uh, have the authentication like register and sign in we will use uh, the methods of uh, having an access token and refresh token and we will also apply the refresh token rotation so that if your uh, account got compromised or someone hacked into your account he should not be able to use he, I, if someone actually copied your cookie he should not be able to use that for long and uh, you can we can allow multiple user logins that you can log in to your account from multiple devices we will all add that function also and basically we will have a video upload function you can upload a video. We can stream a video. We can like the video. Subscribe to others YouTube channel, or others Eldon YouTube channels, and uh, you can dislike the video. You can comment the uh, comment on the video, and basically you can upload a thumbnail for the video, or we can generate the thumbnail by ourselves. We will use multi technology for uploading the video, and we will use FFmpeg for taking snapshots of the video if the thumbnail was not given by the user, just like YouTube does, right? So well, yeah, it's it's going to be a fun video. I I would just say you that right now, okay? It's going to be a fun video. You're going to learn a lot of things that you might have no idea about before, but now you are going to learn it, okay? Well, without wasting time, let's get into the you know uh, structuring of our folders. So first of all, I'm going to make a new folder. Okay, I have quite a few folders right here. And you may also recognize this top folder, the shopping website folder. <laughs> well, don't worry guys, I will be continuing the series. Basically, I was a little bit busy with my exams. And uh, I just thought about making another series. I will be continuing this series also and that e-commerce website series also. So, we will keep moving on with both of them. So, yeah. For now, you can see I have done nothing else. The, this is the whole old code, whatever there was. It, as you can just check it out on my GitHub also. So, yeah. We'll make a new folder. We will call the folder something like uh, Eldon YouTube. And uh, here we're going to open a terminal. Okay. Now we will need to make two folders. Basically, we need to make two folders one for the client section, one for the server section. We're going to make the R client, make the R server. So basically, we made two folders one. Is for the client and one is for the server. We're gonna open the client folder using cd client and we're gonna install our yeah next application in that. We're gonna say yarn create next application in the current folder with a dot means in the current folder. So uh, creating a next application should not take longer. It should around take you know 20 seconds, 30 seconds, 40 seconds, something a lot around that, depending on your internet connection speed and the server speed itself. From where you're getting files, though, and that is the front end part. We'll be getting into the back end part also. I'll just show you the setup also. Okay, so it was done in 24 seconds, and that's a good thing. Now we need to install Tailwind CSS into our project also. We will just okay. Okay. Mm, okay, we need to go to here. We'll say Tailwind CSS. Slash docs slash guides slash next JS. Just copy the terminal thing, the install Tailwind CSS. We'll just paste it right there. Okay, I guess you didn't paste it on the command, right? We'll copy this thing all again. The Tailwind in initialize P. Oh, wait a minute. Had that command, I need to hit enter again. Okay, good. Now, this is a file tailwind.config.javascript. We will have to edit that file. So, basically, I'm going to say ls, all of our files are right there. We're going to say nano. I'm going to use VS Code, don't worry, guys. But for now, I'm just showing you what we have to do. Basically, we're going to say, we're going to say nano tailwind.config.javascript. Oh, it's not Ubuntu. Holy crap. 
I'm actually learning a bunch of so. Never mind, I'll just have a CD out of slash. And type uh, code uh, space and dot, it will open the VS Code into our current folder. So, yeah. There we go. Now we need to go to this file, table in config, paste over this code right here. It basically just say, it's basically just saying, listen to Tailwind CSS in uh, page folder and components folder. Okay. So for now we have here page, the only page folder. We will create another folder with the name of components. And in the components folder, we will put the files which we don't want to be uh, directly shown in the in the local host or your website because the uh, the components or yeah the, basically the components that you will be having in the page folder will work as a uh, route itself unless until you don't make the first letter or any letter capital so what is the advantage of putting your files components into page folder well basically you will have the advantage of using uh, get static props or get server side props function of ne uh, next javascript and uh, you can just you know you can it will just become like the kind of like a dynamic route so you don't have to define you don't have to define routes anywhere like we do in react.js basically yeah that's the thing i like about next javascript and uh, yeah, it's really pretty good because we can also define something like you know, on, uh, in uh, square brackets we can define yeah slug dot JavaScript something like that. And basically, what is going to happen? It's just going to listen to it's just going to you know open any page and whatever we have in the uh, when wherever we our URL is basically just going to send that back to our JavaScript code and in our JavaScript we can actually read. Okay, whatever URL we got there, and we want to send some file on that URL. Basically, that's called dynamic routing. I know it's a little bit complicated, but I will explain you in the future because we are going to show our videos like that. Okay, because we will not be adding our video URLs to any other database like one by one, one by one. Yeah, this video URL is this. If someone clicks on this uh, on this video, just show them this URL. We're not going to do this. It's all going to be dynamic. Okay, just like YouTube. Nice. Okay, now we need to pay copy another thing. That's uh, the global CSS. That's the three CSS, basically. So these are important for us. We need if we don't copy this, uh, we will not get actually we will not get our Tailwind CSS to actually work. Okay, so we need to do something like that. And whatever we did till now, you may not know that, but what happens when we use auto prefix or stuff like that? What we install right now. But basically, what happened is we will uh, it will only generate Tailwind CSS uh, for us only whatever class we use. So what was happening before? We were you know, defining some Tailwind CSS uh, classes, class name in our uh, elements, and it, we were just getting the whole you know thousand of lines of CSS uh, in, set it right there from the Tailwind or Bootstrap itself. Okay, but now Tailwind made a new feature. It will only uh, request for the CSS from the Tailwind uh, website. From the Tailwind CDN, only as much we need. Let's say I define only two class name with the flex and flex column, and we are only going to get CSS for that those two class names. We are not getting going to get CSS for other class names, and that's a very good thing because that can help us uh, help us a lot, right? And yeah, we got the global CSS right there, and uh, go to a page folder. We delete an API folder because we are going to make a Node.js. A server in the server uh, folder but not in the API folder itself okay go to underscore app okay we are going to cut this thing paste it here the export default function we're already importing the global.css so that should not be issue I deleted the home.module.css here because we don't need that okay in the index of JavaScript replace all of them with RFC okay and here basically we have our Index. I'm gonna say name it as Eldoni2. Okay, something like that. And uh, we have a five icons and virtual.svg. Let's keep it there because we don't really much care about it. We can delete the readme.md. Do we do we have anything missed? I don't think so. So we can go to uh, create a new terminal. Here we can say cd client, which means open the go to client folder basically. And here we have to say yarn dev. Yarn dev will actually run your uh, next year server. If you don't have yarn installed, you just have to type npm i yarn. It will just basically install yarn in your PC. So server started at uh, localhost 3000. Just hold 
you just hold the control option and click on the link okay congratulations guys we are showing Elden YouTube and yeah our site is ready well it's not actually ready we will make it ready uh, uh, in this whole course so yeah basically that's it for this video this was a full video for structuring our next years just for starting up and the next video is going to be structuring our server uh, folder it is going to be a little bit more complicated but I will make it as simple as possible well that was it for this video guys I hope you enjoy this I will see you the next time next video join the playlist right now subscribe to my youtube channel like this video share this video comment down below how is uh, everything going and what type of videos you want from me and have a nice day bye bye see you